So I'm excited today to be able to announce that the EMP Alert, the product that I talked about, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, is finally ready uh, and is entering production. So that's great news. So again, what the EMP Alert is, is it's a small plug-in module uh, that you plug into your home or business or RV or wherever you're interested in monitoring. And it would look for conditions that might indicate either a nuclear electromagnetic pulse or a solar coronal mass ejection, all right, both of which can be very harmful. And it does that through three different methods. The first one is it monitors the ambient environment, the air around, to look for a powerful electromagnetic disturbance that's propagating through the air and is then detected by the unit. Okay, now, a solar coronal mass ejection won't have that. It doesn't have a high frequency um, disturbance like that that goes through the air, but a nuclear generated EMP would. All right, and so this would give you a warning if that is detected. It also monitors the power lines, both for that same very rapid pulse that might come in, like an E1, E2 pulse from an EMP, but it also looks for a more sustained uh, energy level that causes the voltage to either rise or fall on the power lines. And that sustained uh, change would be much more associated with like the E3 of an EMP or a coronal mass ejection. All right, so it looks for that on the power lines basically monitors the power lines and says, hey, your level's getting way too high or your, your level's getting way too low. Something is wrong and you need to take action. All right, so it does all three of those things in this one module here. It does this through two different types of alarms. The first one detects when there's a very brief electromagnetic disturbance, either coming through the air or propagating down the power lines, that E1, E2 type event from an EMP. If that is detected, the EMP alert will sound off with a very brief alarm, a couple of seconds, to let you know, hey, I've just detected a really powerful um, but very short in time electromagnetic disturbance, all right? That would give you an early warning. Now, immediately following that, um, if it was an EMP or a solar coronal mass ejection, either one of those, you would end up with the power line levels changing significantly, very likely rising very high. And you would want to be warned as early as possible that the power line levels were getting too high so that you could then open the breaker to your home or business, all right? And that's what this will do. As soon as the voltage on the power line gets a little too elevated, it will sound an alarm that continuously sounds until those power line levels come back down, right? So as the voltage levels start to rise on the power lines, the alarm will start to sound and it'll just keep sounding to warn you, hey, your voltage levels on your home or your business are no longer in the safe range. You need to take some action. Now, there are other things that can cause those voltages to go way out of spec like that. But regardless of the cause, you don't want that feeding your home anyway and so you'd wanna go and open the breaker either way, all right? So it'll give you an intermittent, a very short alarm uh, in the case of the brief E1, E2 pulse, and it will give you a long sustained alarm in the case of an E3 of an EMP or in the case of the disturbance from a solar coronal mass ejection. Now, a lot of people might wonder, well, what, what good is the alarm gonna do for me? Well, it does a few different things. If you know that something is occurring, let's say like the a CME, for example, is occurring, you know in time to go out and open the breaker, you can prevent a great deal of damage that could occur to the home as those voltage levels climb and climb and climb. And it's important to have a functional base of operations, if you will, in a time of emergency, where you're, everything in your home is not damaged from that incident pulse. It gives you options, options to connect up a secondary power system, like a solar power generation system or a generator. It also gives you options that when the power lines are brought back under control and they're brought back in range, that you're able to use that power safely to power your home, all right? So it gives you some options that, just like all preparations, it opens the door to various options that you wouldn't otherwise have. The other thing it does is in the case of something like an EMP or even a large CME that might cause a widespread blackout and which could be, you know, lasting weeks or months even, it, it lets you start thinking of what steps you might take next, perhaps before your, your neighbors and others around you, all right? And that early warning can be very important when you're trying to either evacuate or get your preparations in order, hurrying out and getting supplies, whatever kinds of things you need to do, um, being ahead of others often makes the difference of getting out safely or not, right? So it gives you some warning, um, which can be very useful, in, especially in the case of like an EMP or a large CME. Now by itself, it's not gonna protect your home. There's not any giant surge protector that's gonna pull away the, the EMP or anything like that. It's strictly a warning device that goes along with your other preparations, all right? Things like EMP bags and ferrites on your power cords and a good surge protector on the home, all those things are still very important. This is just giving you a unique warning that you wouldn't otherwise have, all right? And that gives you, again, that gives you some options that you could take from protecting your home to taking some steps to get your preparations in order. 
All right, so what I want to do today is I want to actually demonstrate the unit, all right? Um, I did this on the early prototype, but I want to demonstrate it on the final product. It's a little bit slicker now. The design is a little bit better and more robust. Um, so I want to show how it works, and I'm going to do that through a couple different demonstrations. One is I'm first going to demonstrate how it responds in the case of an overvoltage or an undervoltage. These are sustained power levels that come up too high or drop too low. You'll see that the alarm sounds continuously until that condition is corrected. And then the other thing I want to demonstrate is how it will respond to a radiated pulse, a powerful radiated pulse that comes through the air, and we'll see how it detects that as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to demonstrate is the overvoltage, undervoltage detection. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the cover. I took the screws out of the cover. I know everybody's going to want to see what's inside of it, so I'll just go ahead and save you the trouble of taking it apart. Um, so it's basically a large analog circuit, right? There's no digital circuitry in here that would be easily damaged by an EMP. It has a, a speaker in here, which is what sounds the alarm, of course, and everything else is part of the detection circuitry, all right? The two green lights just indicate the power supplies that are inside the system here, that they're both active. Now, when the unit is first turned on, there'll be a red light that shows up, a couple of red lights actually, that show up here uh, at the bottom of the unit. So if I turn the unit off, and when I first power it up, it will sound a brief alarm as it comes up with that low voltage condition, it comes up and stabilizes. So you'll hear an alarm go off and you'll see the red light show up. So you saw the lights come on and the, the green lights said the power supplies are up now, the lights turn off, the alarm sounds. Every time the unit is power cycled, it does that self test and it sounds that alarm, all right? So if the power were to get cut off at your house and then brought back on, you'll get that temporary alarm saying, hey, I'm checking it out, it's the system is working. Okay, that's a self-test. All right, so that's the unit uh, opened up inside. Um, I encourage you not to get inside the unit. It's very easy to damage the components. And more importantly, there is some high voltage that is inside the unit here, so you could get shocked if you weren't careful. All right, so just, just don't get inside of it and cause yourself any troubles. Just leave the thing buttoned up um, and it'll work just fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and put back on the cover and then I'll run those tests. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put the unit back together. Um, I've plugged it in, I've powered it up. So what you'll see is I'm running it right now at 120 volts AC RMS, that's standard house power in the United States, 60 hertz, and it draws about, oh, 42 milliamps or so, which is quite a very small amount of current. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial up the voltage. You'll see this 120 will start dialing up and the level will eventually get high enough that the unit will sound that you've got an unsafe condition on the power line. So let's go ahead and dial that up. So I'm up to 130. It's still everything's within sort of spec. We're a little bit high, but it's not at a dangerous level. So I'll keep just dialing up here. And when I get to around 150 volts, plus or minus a little bit, it will sound the alarm that, hey, we've reached a level that's unsafe. You should go and take some kind of action so I would dial it back down, get us back into the safe range, um, and the unit recovers, all right? So what would normally happen is if you had an overvoltage condition like that that was sustained on your power lines, you would go out and open the breaker to disconnect the home from that level. You would then monitor the situation, depending on what was causing those levels, to decide, hey, are the power lines back safe again? Maybe we've got a full blackout now and there's no power at all. But what you're trying to do is disconnect before there's any damage that occurs. Now, it's possible that, especially in the case of like a CME, that the power lines might actually collapse and fall, um, which can also cause damage to some electronics. So this unit will also look for low voltages on the power lines uh, and give you warning of that as well. All right, so I'll go ahead and dial it down. And you get down to pretty low values, around 90 volts or so you start sounding an alarm for low voltage, okay? Again, warning you that, hey, this is very abnormal voltage levels on your line, you should take some action. All right, and again, if we recover from that, the unit stops sounding. Okay, so that's how the EMP alert works to detect either over voltage conditions or under voltage conditions on your house or your business power lines. So next what we'll do is we'll demonstrate how it detects the radiated pulse, all right? This is the event where you would get some kind of uh, electromagnetic pulse in the air, it propagates down, it can couple into all kinds of electronics. The EMP alert will also give you a temporary alarm to tell you that some kind of powerful electromagnetic disturbance has just occurred. Now, I obviously don't have an EMP generator here in my garage, um, but what I do have is I have a small portable uh, pulse generator. All right, now, 
This is nowhere near as powerful as an EMP, of course, um, but it is a nice analog to at least give you a broadband pulse to see if the unit can detect it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pulser in close proximity to the EMP alert and show you that it will detect that uh, pulse generation. There's a little button on the side that lets me generate the pulse. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take the pulser and put it in close proximity. And when I push the little pulser button, it sounds the alarm on the EMP alert. Again, it only sounds for a couple of seconds. This is just denoting that there's been a powerful radiated electromagnetic event that it has detected. All right, so the EMP alert, like I said, is a pretty neat product. I don't think you'll find anything else like it uh, anywhere, frankly. Um, it, again, detects both the radiated events of like an E1, E2 of an EMP, as well as the sustained voltage levels going up or going down in the case of like a CME or the E3 of an EMP. Um, you can find out more about it, uh, or you can order them if you'd like, if you go to disasterpreparer.com. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them or just send them to me and I'll be happy to try and answer them.